forgetting what's behind, pressing on to what's ahead. We're going to be kind of short this morning because I really want us to spend some time praying. Um, so, of course, this is the last day of 2017, and tomorrow will be the first day of 2018. And how many of us have made uh, New Year's resolutions? Just put your hand. I'm not going to ask you to tell us what it is. I see, I see one hand, a couple hands. Okay, all right, amen. I made one. I see Nick's hand going up, not to put him on blast, but we're supposed to do Tough mother thing this year. That's a physical running through kind of crazy stuff, but it's something that I always purpose to do, and I found someone crazy enough to do it with me, so I think we're going to do it. So pray for Nick and I as we train to do that. But New Year resolutions, New Year's come, and we always look forward to them with anticipation and with joy, um, but I'm mindful sometimes we may look forward to them in sadness as well. Um, some of us uh, don't have those same loved ones going into the new year that we did during this year that we're about to end. And so it can be kind of difficult for, for persons in that situation. But what we're going to do, we're going to look um, at God's Word for a few minutes. But what I want to do before that is sort of do some vision casting to give us an idea of where it is we're going. Uh, it's important to know where we're going so that we'll know when we get there. And so as we look to uh, the new year, I believe God has a lot in store for us. And I'm really looking forward to seeing that come to fruition, as I'm sure you are as well. But let's sort of look at a little roadmap as to how it is we're going to get there. One of the themes that's sort of going to be over the next year as we start is back to basics. Um, back to basics. So that simply means that, of course, especially as Christians, there's a foundation that uh, we are building our lives on, and that foundation is Jesus Christ as our cornerstone. Um, and the way that we get to know more about Jesus Christ and to fellowship with him more is to spend more and more time with him. Um, but of course, we need to be uh, reading God's word so that we can understand what God's heart is towards us, and also for us to understand what God expects of us. And again, the Holy Spirit of God lives in us, those of us who have asked Jesus to be our Savior. And so back to basics is really honing in on those core things. The same way we came into relationship with Jesus is the same way that we need to continue to live our lives. And that's by his Spirit, with his help, receiving his grace. Uh, so that's the idea with back to basics. So as we start next week, uh, the five weeks a New Year's revolution, we're going to trust that God's going to revolutionize the way that we think about the different pillars or the purposes of our church and help us to activate them in a new way. So the first is rescue, and that's everything to do with the gospel. Uh, we as a community of believers, we've been rescued by the gospel of Jesus Christ. But it's important sometimes to really understand what that gospel is and how desperate we were when we received it, and then how desperate others are to receive it, and the fact that they can only receive it if you and I are telling them about Jesus. And so that'll be the purpose that we look at when we look at rescue. And connect, thinking of our Christian community and the fact that God never designed or anticipated that we could even remotely try to do this Christian life alone. Uh, so we need to be connected to each other. So we'll talk about that as well. And then growing, what are those core things uh, in our lives that God wants us to grow up in as we learn more about him? Um, everything that has to do with growth really has an idea to do with being able to look and see change. You know, if you were to plant a, a seed, um, you would not get excited about the seed until you see some growth. So you can see some evidence that something is changing. And so we'll talk a bit about that as well. I'm serving, so grateful for our church and the reality that we understand what it means to serve. Um, but sometimes uh, we can need reminders um, about what service is, why we serve, um, what the commitment might look like, um, what it looks like when the going gets tough, how we can encourage each other. But serving is a fundamental thing that God has given us to ensure that the body of Christ is healthy. Hence, the Holy Spirit of God gave us all gifts to minister to the body. Those of us who are Christians, the Holy Spirit has given us gifts, and those gifts are to be used specifically for the health and the continued growth of uh, the church, and we do that by serving. And honor, we'll be talking about that, really appreciating that we want to live our lives as an offering to God. 
Um, so Sunday service, we can say, oh, we had a great time of worship, and that's, that's great. Tuesday, we can say we had a great time of worship. Uh, but what does it mean to have a lifestyle of worship? What does it mean to worship when we're not here on a Sunday, not there on a Tuesday, and what does it look like all in between? And part of that will be our heart's disposition and our giving as well is another indication of ways in which we can honor God. So we're going to go through that. We're going to patiently take the time to do that because those are the five pillars of our church. And again, for those of you who, are, who maybe are starting your journey with us, we're excited uh, for that and for you. And we're going to go through that. For those of us who have been here for a little while, it will be a reminder and a refresher. Um, but not just to get it in our minds, but to think of practical ways in which all five of these purposes can be lived out in our lives and in our church. Okay, so that's where we'll be going starting next Sunday. Now, of course, uh, our church, uh, we've said it many times, and we will continue to say it, it is built on the foundation of prayer. Uh, it's through prayer, all things by prayer. Um, you know, we look out and I can see so many miracles um, and in response to us praying for healing and, and finances or difficult situations. Uh, the list goes on and on, but by prayer, everything by prayer. And so... That's the two measures that we have of our church. Uh, the one is how well we are connecting those in the community to us here as a church, uh, and the other is how healthy our church is. And the way that we measure the health of our church is how well, how often, how consistently we are praying. Um, so we really want Tuesday prayer meeting to take on a new meaning. It's a lifeline. It's prayer. There's something that God does supernaturally when we come together to pray. I don't want it to be something that's thought of as optional. Now, granted, I understand schedules and all of that. I get that. But this thing called prayer is just so important. And there are so many prayers that we have prayed that God is continuing to honor. Um, and we're, we're here. Part of that is a result of our prayers. So we really want you to understand that and really take hold of that. Now, to that end, uh, we talked about the 24-hour prayer and fasting that will be coming up. Uh, just raise your hand real quick if you took part in this the last time that we did it. Just put your hand up real quick. Amen. Amen. Um, and I really want to encourage you to do this. Um, so it's a time. It's 24 hours of prayer. And we start at 7 p.m. on Monday, January 8th. And we're just going to pray. We're just going to pray. And that will take us into Tuesday, January the 9th, which will be our first prayer meeting at 82 Trust Street, okay? Now, what's going to be unique about that prayer meeting is not just that the fast ends. It will be that it will not be a normal prayer service. It will be a time when we as a leadership will pray for all of you and your families. So we're going to start praying on Monday night at 7 p.m., straight through to Tuesday night at 7 p.m., at which time the fast will end. We will have a gathering, it's a service, but not as it would normally be, but the intent at that time on the Tuesday is for you to come with your families, and we as a leadership will pray for all of you, just praying God's best for you, protection, and whatever else God would lay on our hearts. So that is how we're going to start our new year as we enter in. Amen? Does everyone understand that? I want that to be clear, because I want us to come out. Um, because we need to pray, all right? So we're going to fast and pray, and then on the Tuesday, we as a leadership will pray for you. So a couple ways we're just encouraging you to sign up at the Connect Center. There's a, a sheet out there you can sign up. This is for the fasting and praying. Uh, also on the Cornerstone app. If you don't have that app, you can get that from the Google Store or the App Store, the iOS App Store. And whenever you use the, the, the app, just keep in mind, you want to close it out, and then restart it, that will always ensure that you have the latest update as to what's on that home page, okay? So if you go there right now and you don't find a spot to sign up, it means that you need to restart it, okay? That's a normal thing, nothing wrong with it, but that just ensures that you have the latest updates and the latest information, okay? So prayer is going to be and continue to be very important to us, and we're going to start it off with 24 hours of prayer and fasting. The other thing as a basic and a foundation to our Christian uh, experience is Bible study. The only way in which you and I came to faith in Jesus Christ is that we understood something about God, we understood something about Jesus, and we understood something about ourselves. What we understood came from the Bible. That's God's love letter to us so that we can understand his heart for us. 
And so Bible study is so important. And so we're going to continue to emphasize that, but in new ways. And so um, it, it's so important to, to know what God's Word says so that as we, we go through life, we have the correct lens or the right filter that we can filter all of our experiences through. All of our experiences, every single one of them, can be filtered through the Bible. But if we don't understand what the Bible says, then we're going to have trouble filtering our experiences and coming to the right conclusions. And so Bible study is going to be something that we're going to be doing uh, more of. And so starting on Tuesday, January the 16th, we will be starting to look at Galatians, which has been described as the gospel of grace. Now, this is going to be drawing a portion of our prayer meeting time. Okay, so we're still going to pray. We're going to come. We're going to worship God. We're going to see him move and do whatever he wants to do. Um, but we're going to get into God's word. We're going to go through it systematically. Pastor Eversley and I will be sharing that. And we're going to be learning God's word. For some, it will be a refresher. For others, it will be, wow, I didn't know that. And wow, that's how I should have responded when I was in that situation. And that's the whole point of understanding God's word. Okay, And for some, it's going to give a taste to then want or, or, or encourage you to go deeper, and you might have some other studies that you want to jump into and what have you. So it's a, it's a general survey of sorts with a specific uh, purpose of application. This is what God's Word says, and this is how we should live our lives. But if we don't know what God's Word says, it's going to be very difficult to live out our lives based on those principles. So I really want to encourage you, this is going to be a time where you're going to bring your Bible, bring your notepad and some pen, and we're going to just, you know, have some fun. We're going to worship. We're going to see God do incredible things. But I really want us to um, make this a focus so that we can get into God's Word, understand what it says, and apply it as fast as possible. Amen? That makes sense? So for those of you who have been in the habit of coming to prayer meeting, I thank God for you. I thank God for all of you, but some have made it more of a habit than others. And I really want to encourage you uh, who haven't quite made it that habit yet to, to really plan as part of your new revolution to make it a habit to come out to prayer meeting because we really need to pray. We need to get into God's word. We need to understand how God would have us live our lives, and we need to encourage each other just by showing up. Amen? Amen. All right. So a couple things to keep in mind as we move forward into the new year. So we're going to look at God's word for a few minutes, and then we're going to pray. Forgetting what's behind and pressing on to what's ahead. I want us to, you don't have to close your eyes, but you can do that. Just think about this last year and maybe some things that you want to forget about, uh, things that maybe you need to forget about, but you haven't quite forgotten about it yet. But things that haven't been all that helpful that stopped you in one way or another from pursuing God's plan for your life. It might be fear because of a certain situation, or it might be not wanting to take the next step, and maybe not even taking the next step to make membership. It could be a, a host of different things. But I want us to think about, just real quick, maybe 30 seconds, a minute at the top, just think about one or two areas of your life that you feel God is what God would want you to forget about or at least put in the right perspective so that whatever it is is not overwhelming the thing that God would have us pursue. Would you do that right now? You can close your eyes or not. That's fine. But just think about that and, and, and just ask God to help you with whatever that is. God, what is it that you would want me to forget or at least put in the right perspective so that I can pursue you uh, in the right way in the new year? And then this is what I want you to do next. Just ask God to help you to be able to put whatever that thing is in the right perspective so that it doesn't overwhelm you and your emotions to the extent that we stop pursuing God's purpose for our lives. Because sometimes we can come to the conclusion of, well, I'll forget, I'll forget, I'll forget. Well, I don't know about you, my mind doesn't quite turn off that way. But I think what's more helpful is, God, let me see you as much bigger than whatever that thing is so that I can continue to pursue you, and by your grace, I'm going to put that thing in the right perspective. And God's going to help you just because you asked for his help. He's going to help me just because... I've asked for his help. And so as we get towards the end, we're going to do some more praying, and we're just going to thank God for the ways in which he's going to answer the prayer that you and I just prayed, okay? 
But I want us to focus on God's Word just for a few minutes, forgetting what's behind, pressing on to what's ahead. And we're going to look at Philippians uh, chapter 3. This is the Apostle Paul writing. If you know anything about the Apostle Paul, he had a very interesting, colorful, and difficult life, but one that he used all out to serve God. And so in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, this is one of the conclusions that Paul has come to as he reflects on his own life. And he says this, Not that I have already obtained this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The first thing I just want us to really understand and reflect and just accept. Sometimes it's hard to see things in Scripture and say that that applies to me, but if God says it and you're a child of his, it applies. That's just the way that it is. What Paul's conclusion is this. He says, I haven't quite reached all that I'm going to be going for, but I'm on the right path and I'm trusting God. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. So the question has to be, what did Christ Jesus take hold of for me? Well, there's lots of things that Jesus Christ took hold of for you and for me. His righteousness is one thing. His peace. His love. Um, all of those things are things that Jesus, when he died, took hold on and he wants us to have. And so Paul comes to the conclusion, it may not be easy necessarily, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. In other words, Paul's saying, I want what Jesus wants me to have. I want what Jesus wants me to have. I don't want just second best. It might be difficult from my perspective to attain it because I haven't reached the goal, and yeah, it's difficult and all of that stuff, but I want what Jesus wants me to have. Sometimes we can come to the conclusion that I don't deserve it. I don't deserve God's grace. After all, you know, if you knew my past and if you knew this, and yeah, well, well God knows about it anyway. But we have to come to the conclusion that despite it all, I want what Jesus wants me to have. And if Jesus wants you to have it, and Jesus wants me to have it, let's accept it, let's receive it, and let's go with it. That's part of that first Peter verse saying, he given us everything for life and godliness. So that's just something to keep in mind. Let's not purpose to think that God's grace and the good stuff is for the other person who lived a better life than I did. Uh-uh. Let's take hold of the things that God wants us to have. Amen? We gotta do that. And... Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, when you study Paul's life and you understand sort of some of the things that he had been through, this concept of forgetting, it takes on like a whole new meaning. So when I think of Paul and I think about this verse and I think about his history and his testimony and all of that stuff, there's so many things that could come to mind, but one of the things that automatically jump out at me is Paul's got to remember what his life was like before he got saved to the extent that he was responsible for murdering Christians. He was responsible for killing Christians, and now he's one of them. I picture Paul going from one place to the other, especially in the early days when he was just being presented as this Apostle Paul, and he would be going from one place to another place, and the the church that he was going to to now teach, they would know that, who, this Paul guy, the Saul guy, the Paul. People in that church probably had family members killed by this guy. But that's what the calling that God had on his life was. And so when I think about Paul talking about forgetting some stuff, putting stuff in perspective, not denying that it didn't happen, but putting it in the right perspective, I think of Paul and I just think about the grace of God that had to just, just, just cover that man's life. His life, his zeal had everything to do with stomping out the name of Jesus and killing Christians. So now he is the apostle, he's teaching people about Jesus, The Jews, he's trying to work that out with some of them, and the Gentiles, they really didn't know the history as well, I guess, but 
here's this guy coming to a conclusion in his life. One, I want what Jesus wants me to have. Yeah, I can't forget about my past, but it's in the right perspective because I'm not letting that stop me from the purpose that God has for me. And some of the stuff that Paul had to forget was, man, you know, I can imagine Paul sitting down with other Christians who he's ministering to, maybe being ministered to, and some of their family members would have been persecuted or killed, and Paul might be at the same table as the other family members. You talk about forgetting some stuff and pressing on ahead. You talk about the grace of God needed to have that mindset to keep on going and still to pursue the purpose that God has for his life. Grace of God, grace of God. And I think that's one of the reasons every single epistle that Paul wrote, it starts with grace and peace to you. Grace and peace. I think it comes from this real place in his life that says, I know how much grace is needed because I received it in measure that you cannot even imagine, and I know how much you need it. So you need God's grace. We need God's grace. But when Paul comes to this conclusion of, you know what, forgetting what's behind and straining toward what is ahead, he's pressing on to the mark for the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I just want us to reflect on whatever it is that you think is holding you back from pursuing God's best for your life. What is it that you need to forget? You've made that list of maybe one or two things and you prayed about it. And I want you now to understand and appreciate that God has to fill you with his grace. We don't just forget stuff. I don't know. That's been my experience. I can be in the car driving downtown, and I got flashbacks because I remember that nightclub or I remember that park. I might bump into somebody or even on Facebook, someone's name pops up, somebody from college. Now, I don't know how your memory works, but mine can be kind of vivid sometimes, and I got to keep it in some tight lane sometimes. But what I've come to appreciate is that God's grace is so real. And God's grace, it doesn't necessarily, you know, put an eraser to your mind and just sort of erase the memory. I wish it could do that, but it doesn't, not in my experience. But what God's grace does is help put those things in perspective and enlarge God and who he is and the purpose that he wants of our lives so that when we compare the two, what we're forgetting is nothing in comparison to what God has for us going forward. And so this is where we're going to end today. We can have some music um, playing. I just want us to reflect. You've already labeled those couple of things. You told God about it. Now I want us collectively to say, God, will you give me your grace, God, to put that in perspective? Because it's been holding me back. There was this ministry that I knew you wanted me to do in 2017. You gave me a heart for it. I hardly sleep at night because I know it's what you want me to do. But this thing, God... This place where I messed up before, God, I can't bring myself to say, you know what? You can still use me. God, I need your grace. Or, God, that fearful thing that happened at my former church, and I've never gotten over it, and I don't think I ever will get over it. And so I, know, I don't think I can serve. I don't even want to join the church. I just want to come and sort of not be seen. God, I need your grace. I need your grace. That experience that happened to, to you or I way back when, which maybe we haven't gotten over. And I don't want to make this simplistic about, you know, just snap your fingers, you get. No, but that's where God's grace comes in. That's where God's grace comes in. So as we go into a new year, whatever it is that has stopped you and stopped me from pursuing God's best, let's go to God right now and say, God, will you just fill me with your grace, God? Fill me with your grace. Enlarge who you are in my life. Enlarge the purpose and plan that you have for my life. And give me the strength to get out there and do it. So I want us to stand. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. We need God's grace. We need God's grace. We need God's grace. Working harder is important, but we need God's grace. Committing more, yeah, we need to do that too, but we need God's grace. So all of the instructions that you'll read through when Paul's talking to the churches and saying, you got to do this and you got to put this effort in and all, but the chapters always start with grace and peace. 
Because without God's grace and the peace that comes from his grace, then the straining part just because becomes academic. It becomes something that's a ritual and it doesn't have the joy of the Lord in it. So this is the simple altar call this morning. I just want us to all come down front. You know what it is that you present it to God and say, you know what, God? This thing is it's, it's, it's tripped me up, God. It's tripped me up. It hurts. Haven't gotten over it. But God, would you fill me with your grace, God? Because I know you have a purpose and a plan in my life. And I want to see it come to fruition. And then at the same time, this isn't to suggest that God hasn't been working in our lives. So let's go ahead and thank God for what he has done. Maybe during the course of 2017, uh, there was another issue that you brought before God, and God helped you with it, and his grace filled you, and you got over it, and you got back to serving, and you got back to that purpose that God had for you. Well, let's thank God for that as well. But as we go into a new year, I want to encourage us all to come before God, open, broken, humble, and say, God, fill me with your grace, because there was a plan that you have for my life, and I want to see it come to fruition. And my encouragement to you is this. It's one thing to come together like this and receive God's grace. Don't think that this is the only time that you can get it. God's grace is available. It's available as soon as your foot hits the floor out of your bed. It's available in the shower. It's available on your jaw. It's available on Sundays, yes, it's available. God's grace is what we need. It is available. So get in the habit of receiving God's grace. Paul had to get into that habit because he knew there was some stuff that his mind probably just couldn't switch off from. And he needed God's grace to overwhelm him over and over. Every time he wrote grace and peace, I think he was reminding himself of just how much he needed it for his own life. God's grace is available. He's not stingy with it. He knows we need it, and he will give it to us time and time again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's thank God for his grace. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This message has been brought to you by Cornerstone Bible Fellowship Bermuda. To connect with us, visit us at www.cornerstone.bm. Or if you have a prayer request, email us at prayer at cornerstone.bm.